Adventure. I'm Trent. And I'm Siobhan. And we are just driving back from Poverty Point, Louisiana today for our adventure day. We had a blast. Yes. Learned so much. It was definitely discovery day for us. <laughs> They're all looking at the reflections in the car. We are at Poverty Point National Historical Monument or something like that. This is a World Heritage Site, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So, and they're having like an archaeological, not a dig, but they're they're going through the um, they're going through the soil left over from excavation and making sure that there's nothing in it by screen screening it. So we're gonna check that out today and see if we find something cool. Our kids would never learn in a book, in a history book. It's stuff that I never learned in history, and most people never learn in history. We did geocaching. We did a lot of geocaching. We've been doing geocaching that we put down on the last video. Yeah, but we did more geocaching, and the kids are really getting into that, and like we're discovering, yeah. we're discovering that it's everywhere. Last stop for the night. We're here at this Italian place with our friends and we're gonna watch a jazz band play. Just kind of fun. It's kind of the reason why we came tonight. Gives the boys the opportunity to experience dinner in a different way. So it's gonna be yummy. Is it fun geocaching today? Yes. I like geocaching. I love puzzles. I've always loved puzzles. Yeah, she's kind of gotten a little addicted to it, which is kinda of cool. Well, one of the other things that we did this week is we went on two dates, not one date, not but one two, two dates, which led us to... Which we haven't been on a date, even <laughs> yeah. a single one since Christmas time. Right. Uh, but that led us to something that we figured we would uh, talk about here on our channel as an encouragement to other families who are traveling, other families who are potentially taking longer trips with their families, because one thing that's unique for us is we can't just go out and leave one of the kids in charge of all the other kids because yeah. they're not old enough for that yet. Yeah, a little bit We too are young. still very much in the necessity of babysitting stage. And so that is a challenge for us. But honestly, it's a challenge for any family, whether they're living in an RV or not. And so we thought we would give some helpful tips to you guys as to ways where you can take a creative date. This week, we, um, we got really 
lucky. We have been staying in Louisiana. Trent's been working a little bit for a church on the weekends. And so we have gotten to know some people here in this community. Um, which It's been short. It's been short. Yeah. But here's the thing is if you're traveling full time and you do have some kind of stopping time in a place for a few weeks, you get to know people. Um, or you get to know the community. For us in particular, we looked at the church that we've been at and asked them if they knew a good babysitter who was reputable, who had CPR training and all of that. And we found one. And Yeah, and I mean, like for anybody, uh, you know, you're more than likely in a church more regularly than we are. But this is where a church in your community comes in handy if you attend church or not like maybe you should consider doing it because this is a way where the church in your community can help and be a uh, stability for your family um, in terms of babysitting I know it may seem simple but it's healthy for you and your spouse to get out on a date it is it's important um, and even if you if you don't have a church that you're connected to, it might be just a good resource to call a church office and ask if they know of somebody because usually churches have regular babysitters that kind of help out at their church with the children. Um, if, if not, there's other websites that you can look into like nannying websites and things like that um, that are really reputable as far as I've heard. I know a lot of people have done that in their travels. Just look on a reputable babysitting website and find a babysitter through there. But that was awesome. So that was Tuesday night. Yep, the babysitter was... we got, very reputable, came out to the RV, watched the kids. They had a blast and Siobhan and I got a chance to go out to a Mexican restaurant and we went and watched Black Panther. It was awesome. such a great movie. So great. If you haven't seen it, go. Another way that you can find babysitting on the road or at home in a community is to trade babysitting. And we have done this actually before. When we lived in a house, we had friends that had large families like ours. And rather than spend the money on a babysitter, we would trade babysitting. So one weekend, you know, the other couple would go out on a date while we watched their children along with ours. And I mean, it's a lot of kids, but it can be a lot of fun. It's it can be a lot of fun. It's almost well, like a short sleepover kind of thing. And this is sometimes a little bit better of an alternative than the one we just mentioned because the one we just mentioned is kind of expensive, especially for our size family. That makes the date like twice as expensive. But this yeah. is a way where you can maybe save on the cost. Yeah. And even when you're on the road, you know, like for instance, right now we have the Easterlies that are staying at the campground that we're at. They're an amazing family. We've known them for quite a while now. Um, we trust them, and therefore it's something that we could possibly do with their family, even though we did it this week. Yeah, because... but we've done this with the Bowmans. Yes. We've done this with the Gendons. Yeah. Uh, we've done this a lot when we have family that we're like, we trust. Yeah. And it doesn't take long, really, for you to come to a place where you can trust people uh, because they're trusting you as well. Yeah. Another way that you can have a date night on the road is to not go out at all. And sometimes we do this a lot. It we may do seem this. silly, but this is our most common one. This and is the most common. Yes, we will go to the store and get a nice meal, or usually it's just like really nice cheese and crackers. And we will put the kids back in their room with their own kids fun movie that we got at Redbox, and we'll get a movie for ourselves. And we will just sit in bed with a glass of wine and a cheese tray 
and just enjoy some quiet alone time. And the kids know that they're not allowed to come out unless there's an emergency or right. something like that. But um, but we actually really enjoy that. We usually do this like once a week, actually, because yeah. again, for us, the other options are good, and we are intentional to try to do that. But it's less common. Yeah. Um, and it does take time to develop a relationship. But um, the other one is is just enjoyable. It's relaxing for us. We both enjoy just getting to be with each other. And I will say that this is maybe just an encouragement to say that you you should get in the habit as a parent of putting your kids to bed by 8 o'clock at night anyway. And the reality there is that means that you, you as a they will grow accustomed to allowing you to have quiet time with each other before they go to bed. Yeah, it's important for you as a couple to have time just the two of you. Um, and we love our family, we love our kids, and we're not the type that want our kids silent or gone from us. It's not It's not anything like that, but we do want our relationship to be strong, and, and right. it's just so important to have that time. Taking you on a date tonight. Taking you on a date tonight. Woo! We are going on a date. date. We've had it's two another dates date. this week. We've had two dates. We've eaten out way too much this week, but we're going to this. But we never do this. We're going to this brewery called the Flying Tiger, and it's normally just a brewery, just craft beer. Tonight, there's a local chef that's like known on the Food Network and stuff, and he's going to be cooking here tonight. So, um, we're gonna go check it out, see if we can still get a seat. I don't know, we'll see. We're going with Doug and Carol, our kids are at church. There they are, <laughs> double day. Rita! Woo! <laughs> see the tears all real, I'm crying. We know what this is all about now. So, this is a local chef that used to have a restaurant. He may still, I don't know. But he was on... Food Network's next star. That's cool. He was he was like the runner up. Well, I just love the fact that like there's music going on. In Live there. music, good outdoor food. seating. I don't. It's we're gonna try funny. not to sit in there because Siobhan didn't bring a sweater tonight. And then this is like all in their brewery part. Like, check that out. I love this. That's so cool. How is it? It's really good. Yeah. What is this? What is it? Yeah. I don't know, but it's really good. <laughs> what is it? I think it's crawfish nachos. Crawfish nachos. This is a shrimp steam bun that was amazing. And then some catfish tacos. And we're having fun. Parents without kids. But this does happen from time to time in communities. So for those of you who are, um, you know, not out on the road, this will be more likely, but even on the road, it might be possible. But um, the church that we are helping out at actually had a date night for parents. And basically we paid $15 to drop our kids off to have fun for three hours. Right. They That's played awesome. video games, they made crafts and things like that. Um, and there's some community centers and things like that that will offer um, parents' nights out. So definitely look for those in your community. They do happen and it's really nice. That's a cheap date night. Fifteen dollars for yeah. babysitting. Yeah, and this is an encouragement that I will give specifically to pastors or leaders of churches who are watching our channel as well. The reality is, guys, is if you don't take for granted your 30-somethings population in your church, this is such a needed, yes. essential ministering tool to your community. You will have people come to your church that might not know Christ, and they might not know or care much about church, but they care about their relationship. 
and this speaks volumes to them. I know because it speaks volumes to us. Yeah, if we want, if we want um, families to be stronger in our nation, which we have a real bad problem with that right now, but if we want to strengthen families, this is a huge help to families to, yeah. to offer childcare so that they can just go have a simple date. Um, so we did that this week. We spent an evening with Easterlies. We had dinner at one place and dessert at another place. And we just enjoyed adult conversation. And it was amazing. So that's how we had two date nights this week. And, and it I was think that that was so even great. more of a blessing for Carol and Doug, who haven't gotten a date yes. in a while either. So it was, was so great. And finally, the last date tip that we want to give you is sometimes you don't need to go out together at all. Sometimes you need to take one of your kids on a date. And so the way we do that, like for instance, recently Camden finished a book. This is one of our big date nights that I do, is anytime one of them finishes a book where there's a movie coming out, I will take them to see that movie. So Camden finished the book Wonder, and I took him out on a mother-son date, and we went to see Wonder, and it was a great movie. And so I just encourage you guys, um, you know, father-daughter dates are awesome. I get to do mother-son dates. You can mix it up and do mother-daughter, father-son. It doesn't matter, but take your kids out on dates every once in a while so that they can know that you want to spend time with them and, and they have your ears and you can, you know, they can tell you anything and, and that's just a special time for a kid. It, it um, just grows the bond between you and opens the lines of communication just like it does with us. We need date nights so that we can have open lines of communication and our kids need that too. Yep. And you know, it's just a way where we can we, we realize we're not any different than any other family living a house or a tiny home somewhere. We have to exist and have fun with each other. We need to recreate, you know? We need to not let our lives be so consumed with work, but that we can enjoy each other's company. Yeah, for sure. I apologize if it's gotten dark in our video, the sun is setting and... Or if it's too loud. We shouldn't, well, the road night road noise might be kind of loud but um but yeah we're we're headed home and it's been a beautiful day but the sun is setting i wish you guys could see how we can't can't really see the sunset this week we are actually headed out to the asheville north carolina area to meet up with another youtube family we're super excited super we've, excited we've been following them for about a year we can tell them who they are right yeah, they're they don't have to keep it a secret. No, so they're called Sounds Like Rain. The the husband and wife do music together, and they've made some awesome music. And they uh, have five boys. They have five. They just had their fifth son, and uh, they also have a vlog called Tiny Notes from Home. It's an excellent vlog. I highly recommend it. So you guys go check that out. But we're gonna go and be spending some time with them. We're gonna be doing a house show with them. Mm -hmm. And also, while we're there, we're going to be taking a trip over to Greenville, South Carolina to go to the Great Homeschool Convention. That's coming up this next coming weekend, not, not today while you're watching this, but this next coming weekend. So if you're going to be there at the Greenville, South Carolina um, Great Homeschool Convention, make sure you let us know because we'd love to meet up with you. For and sure. Send us a note on Twitter, yeah. Instagram. YouTube, let us know. We love that. Yeah, so we're really excited about that. We've got a lot of things coming up and just a really exciting next um, two, three weeks. We're going to be Very celebrating busy. our anniversary <laughs> at a special place and can't wait to show you guys that as well. I mean, it's going to be awesome. Make sure you stick around the next two or three weeks because we're going to have a whole lot of fun. Right. So we need to finish off with our believer bump today. <laughs> believer bump. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of weird. The believer bump this week is from Kev the Barbarian. I like the name. <laughs> yeah, Kev says, you guys are going to have a tight-knit family forever. Most families fall away from each other while you guys will have experiences to last a lifetime. 
that's awesome that is so awesome and we are so we're so blessed from that uh, so yeah that's but I so will encouraging say it's not just the experiences you have to be intentional you have to be intentional yeah. and, and pray family still takes a lot of work and maybe even more work on the road and families that pray and together stay together I'm not just saying that as a cliche but it's true we have to be intentional about that so it's I appreciate true. that encouragement yes um, Yep, just a second. Daddy's going to sign give off. Him another cheesy. He needs a cheesy. So we're so grateful off, for Daddy. you guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and a, a like or a whatever you got to put on these things. Oh, the Believer Bomb. Leave us a comment so we can feature you on our Hit Believer Bomb. Hit that notification bomb. bell. Yes. All that Patreon. stuff. Patreon. Patreon, all that stuff. La, 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 la. And we love you guys. Remember, we can make we the world make better. better. I, I believe, believe we can. We can. Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, 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 okay, bye.